appropriate police action. First, I will discuss how I reached my decision, and then I will answer any questions you have on the topic. For some time prior to July 17, 2014, neighborhood residents purposely avoided the area in and directly around Tompkinsville. cigarettes made cheaper by the fact that New York State taxes had not been paid on them. A liquor store nearby sold alcohol to people who would drink that alcohol in the park. People who would sometimes use drugs, urinate and pass out on benches there. That summer, the week before there had been reports of theft and two robberies in the park, there were 911, 311 and other complaints from residents and merchants on an ongoing basis. In some cases, Warnings or summonses were issued. In other cases, arrests were made. And that was the situation at Tompkinsville Park on the day Officer Pantaleo was sent with another officer to conduct an enforcement operation. When the second officer observed Mr. Garner hand out cigarettes in exchange for money, they approached Mr. Garner to make an arrest. That offense could have resulted in a summons, but Mr. Garner refused to provide identification, which meant he would have been brought to the precinct for processing. For several minutes on that widely viewed video, Mr. Garner makes it abundantly clear that he will not go willingly with the police officers. He refused to cooperate with the arrest and to comply with lawful orders. The video also makes clear that Officer Pantaleo's original efforts to take Mr. Garner into custody were appropriate and that he initially attempted two maneuvers sanctioned by the police department. Officer Pantaleo first grabbed Mr. Garner's right wrist and attempted an armbar technique in preparation for handcuffs to be used. Mr. Garner immediately twisted and pulled and raised both of his hands while repeatedly telling the officers to not touch him. Officer Pantaleo then wrapped his arms around Mr. Garner's upper body. Up to that point in this tense and rapidly evolving situation, there was nothing to suggest that Officer Pantaleo attempted to place Mr. Garner in a chokehold. But what happened next is the matter we must address. The two men stumbled backward towards the large plate glass window, the storefront behind them, and Officer Pantaleo's back made contact with the glass, causing the window to visibly buckle and, and warp. The person videotaping the episode later testified at the NYPD trial that he thought both men would crash through the glass. It was at that point in the video that Officer Pantaleo was seen with his hands clasped together and his left forearm pressed against Mr. Garner's neck and what constitutes a chokehold. The NYPD court ruled that while certainly not preferable, that hold was acceptable during that brief moment in time because the risk of falling through the window was so high. But that exigent circumstance no longer existed, the court found, when Officer Pantaleo and Mr. Garner moved to the ground. As Mr. Garner balanced himself on the sidewalk on his hands and knees, Deputy Commissioner of Trials Rosemarie Maldonado found that Officer Pandaleo consciously disregarded the substantial and unjustifiable risk of maneuver explicitly prohibited by the department. She found that during the struggle, Officer Pantaleo had the opportunity to readjust his grip from a prohibited chokehold to a less lethal alternative, but did not make use of that opportunity. Instead, even once Mr. Garner was moved to his side on the ground, with his left arm behind his back and his right hand still open and extended, Officer Pantaleo kept his hands clasped and maintained the chokehold. Mr. Garner's obvious distress is confirmed when he coughs and grimaces. Moreover, Trials Commissioner Maldonado found that Officer Pantaleo's conduct caused physical injury that meets the penal law threshold and that his recklessness caused multi-layered internal bruising and hemorrhaging that impaired Mr. Garner's physical condition and caused substantial pain and was a significant factor in triggering an asthma attack. For all of these reasons, taken together, even after reviewing Officer Pantaleo's commendable service record of nearly 300 arrests and 14 department medals earned leading up to that day, Trial Commissioner Maldonado recommended that he be dismissed from the department. In making this penalty recommendation, she wrote, this tribunal recognizes that from the outside, outset, Mr. Garner was non-compliant compliant and argumentative, and further notes that the patrol guide allows officers to use reasonable force when necessary to take an uncooperative individual into custody. 
What the patrol guide did not allow, however, even when this individual was resisting arrest, was the use of a prohibited chokehold. As you know, a number of external authorities have asked many of the same questions we have about this incident. On August 19, 2014, about a month after Mr. Garner's death, the Staten Island District Attorney's Office announced it would impanel a grand jury and present evidence on that matter. On December 3, 2014, those 23 Staten Island residents voted to not indict Officer Pantaleo, clearing him of criminal wrongdoing. That same day, the United States Attorney General announced that the U.S. Department of Justice would conduct its own investigation into Mr. Garner's death and way bringing federal civil rights charges against Officer Pantaleo. In the intervening years, the Justice Department made ongoing requests to the NYPD asking us to delay our internal disciplinary process until its civil rights investigation was complete. And we honored those requests as their process stretched from one administration to the next with no action by federal prosecutors. And so on July 21, 2018, we decided to begin NYPD proceedings. Members of the public in general, and Ms. Mr. Garner's family in particular, have grown understandably impatient. The trial began on May 13, 2019. On July 16, 2019, one day before the five-year statute of limitations expired, the Justice Department announced it would not file federal charges against Officer Pantaleo. Then, on August 2, 2019, with Officer Pantaleo's NYPD trial concluded, Trials Commissioner Maldonado ruled that Officer Pantaleo's use of a prohibited chokehold was reckless and constituted a gross deviation from the standard of conduct established for a New York City police officer. After noting that Officer Pantaleo had admitted he was aware that chokeholds are prohibited by the department, she further concluded, with strongly worded and repeated warnings about the potentially lethal effects of chokeholds found throughout multiple sections of the training materials, it is evident that the department made its 2006 recruits keenly aware of the inherent dangers associated with the applic application of pressure to the neck. Given this training, a New York City police officer could reasonably be expected to be aware of the potentially lethal effects connected with the use of a prohibited chokehold and be vigilant in eschewing its use. From the start of this process, I was determined to carry out my responsibility as police commissioner unaffected by public opinions demanding one outcome over another. I examined the totality of the circumstances and relied on the facts. And I stand before you today confident that I have reached the correct decision. And that has certainly not made it an easy decision. I served for nearly, nearly 34 years as a New York City cop before becoming police commissioner. I can tell you that I, had I been in Officer's, Pant Officer's Pantaleo situation, I may have made similar mistakes. And had I made those mistakes, I would have wished I had used the arrival of backup officers to give the situation more time to make that arrest. And I would have wished that I had released my grip before it became a chokehold. Every time I watch that video, I say to myself, as probably all of you do, to Mr. Garner, don't do it. Comply. To Officer Pantaleo, don't do it. I said that about the decisions made by both Officer Pantaleo and Mr. Garner. But none of us can take back our decisions, most especially when they lead to the death of another human being. I was not in Officer Pantaleo's situation that day. I was Chief of Patrol, and later that year, Chief of Department. In that position, I proposed our neighborhood policing model so that the same cops would be in the same neighborhoods every day, so that relationships would replace preconceptions, so that problem solving and prevention would become tools officers were trained in and supported in using. And therefore, one of the greatest, the great challenges of the police profession here in New York City and elsewhere will always remain arresting someone who intends to resist that arrest. Communication and de-escalation techniques are employed where possible, but more often than the police and the public alike would prefer, varying levels of force are used to ensure compliance. Society gives our police the legal authority to use acceptable levels of force when necessary because police cannot otherwise do their job. Every day in New York, people receive summonses or are arrested by officers without any physical force being used. But some people choose to verbally and or physically resist the enforcement action lawfully being taken against them. 
Those situations are unpredictable and dangerous to everyone involved. The street is never the right place to argue the appropriateness of an arrest. That is what our courts are for. Being a police officer is one of the hardest jobs in the world. This is, that is not a statement to elicit sympathy from those we served. It's a fact. Cops have to make choices, sometimes very quickly, every single day. Some are split-second, life-and-death choices. Oftentimes, they are choices that will be thoroughly and repeatedly examined by those with much more time to think about them than the police officer had. And those decisions are scrutinized and second-guessed, both fairly and unfairly. No one believes that Officer Pantaleo got out of bed on July 17, 2014, thinking he would make choices and take actions during an otherwise routine arrest that would lead to another person's death. But an officer's choices and actions, even made under extreme pressure, matter. It is unlikely that Mr. Garner thought he was in such poor health that a brief struggle with the police would cause his death. He should have decided against resisting arrest, but a man with family lost his life, and that is an irreversible tragedy. And a hardworking police officer with a family, a man who took this job to do good, to make a difference in his home community, has now lost his chosen career. And that is a different kind of tragedy. In this case, the unintended consequence of Mr. Garner's death must have a consequence of its own. Therefore, I agree with the Deputy Commissioner of Trials legal findings and recommendations. It is clear that Daniel Pantaleo can no longer effectively serve as a New York City police officer. In carrying out the court's verdict in this case, I take no pleasure. I know that many will disagree with this decision, and that is their right. There are absolutely no victors here today, not the Garner family, not the community at large, and certainly not the courageous men and women of the police department who put their own lives on the line every single day in service and to the people of this great city. Today is a day of reckoning, but can also be a day of reconciliation. We must, fo we must move forward together as one city, determined to secure safety for all, safety for all New Yorkers and safety for every police officer working daily to protect all of us. I'll now take your questions. Commissioner, even though you had Rosemary Malcolm's decision from a couple of weeks ago, you touched on this. The decision, as you said, was very difficult. But, and if you could address the rumors that have been running around for the last couple of days, that it was so difficult that you had decided that you would rather leave the department rather than make this decision today. Completely under. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to talk about rumors. That this is, let's talk about the decision that Rosemarie made, the decision that was affirmed by uh, uh, Deputy Commissioner Tucker, and the decision I just made you today. How difficult then was it? It's an extremely difficult decision. When did you actually make this decision? Was this up to the wire, or had you made this decision a couple of days ago? Hey, Mark, I think you know me long enough by now that this was not an easy decision. It's not something that... Uh, I could make over a few hours. You know, I've been I've been thinking about this since the day I was sworn in as police commissioner. So it's uh, now it, it, the decision was made in, in the last last couple of days. Tony, uh, commissioner, has the, any de determination been made about any pension rights or benefits? Or yeah, he's he's being terminated. So whatever contributions he made to the pension system, uh, he'll get back. Marsha, Marsha, hold on. So immediately, I'm sending out uh, my remarks and, and uh, the video of this press conference so they know uh, what you all know. And uh, I've been a cop a long time. And if I was still a cop, I'd probably be mad at me. I would. You're not looking out for us. But I am. It's my responsibility as police commissioner to look out for the city and certainly to look out for the New York City police officers. They took this job to make a difference. And you all know the city's been transformed. I've had a lot of help, 
but it's the cops out there right now and the thousands that have come before us that continue to make this city safe. Some will be angry, and uh, I have a great executive staff. Uh, these police officers uh, do a terrific job each and every day, and we'll have to work through this. It's a resilient organization. Well, you I, I did this based on the evidence and testimony at the trial. Okay. And Mr. The, our understanding is that negotiations went back and forth Friday and Saturday, and that at one point you were either told or instructed by City Hall that things had to go a certain way. Can you no, no, that's that's not. This is my decision. There, uh, there are a couple possible outcomes, but uh, this is the decision that the police commissioner makes. And I am that I'm, this is a disciplinary case, like other disciplinary cases, and it's my decision. Commissioner Rocco, Commissioner I'm going to get to you in a second. Hold on. Rocco. Did you, did you follow the trial day by day, or did you wait to the end of the trial? And then can you talk about what you reviewed? Yeah, no, I, I, I did not follow the trial day to day. Uh, I waited for uh, the testimony to come up and the evidence to come up. I have a staff that works for me up in my office. They do disciplinary cases. They reviewed it. Uh, we got the, the Rosemary's decision. We looked at that and we moved forward. Right here, the blonde hair. Have you spoken to the Garner family? I have not. Uh, Commissioner Tucker has attempted to reach out to them. Uh, a couple of different phone calls. Uh, didn't happen too long ago. We're waiting for a call back. All the way in the corner over there. Have you spoken to Officer Pantaleo yourself, you or your office, or is, he, is this the first time he's hearing the video? No, this is, this is the first time. This is the announcement was from here. What's that? I, I talked to uh, I talked with Mayor De Blasio about uh, process and possible outcomes. Commissioner Ashley. Commissioner, um, in her decision, Judge Maldonado indicated that Pantaleo was untruthful, <coughs> and she also raised questions about the credibility of other officers who were not obviously on trial in this case. Can you speak about that conduct and how you felt reading that? So this all this whole situation transpired in seconds. Uh, I'm sure no one in this room, if they were involved in, and no one in this room probably had to except the police had to arrest anybody in a physical struggle. And if they could recount step for step what they did, uh, I think that would be nothing short of a miracle. Uh, this is the decision Rosemary made, Rosemary made. This is, uh, was affirmed by the first deputy commissioner. And I'm agreeing with that. Sir, yes. Sir, just to be clear. Are are you making this decision to agree with the judge, or are you making this decision because you believe it is also the right decision? I am. This is there is a department trial. There's a process. Rosemarie made the decision again, affirmed by Ben Tucker, and I agree with both of their findings. Commissioner, uh, have a yep. You spoke about uh, wishing that Eric Garner wouldn't have resisted and would have just complied. You also said you wish that Officer Pantaleo would have waited for backup. So what is the lesson for your officers coming out of this decision? So immediately after this, back in 2014, Ben Tucker was the Deputy Commissioner of Training still at the time. We put all of our police officers through a three-day course, including de-escalation. Uh, we've done a lot of other things that uh, we've done fair and impartial policing, and every police officer has wearing a body worn camera now. Uh, there's a lot of things that came out of this incident, and every time there is an incident that affects the NYPD, there's always something to learn. Right behind you? Yep. Uh, Commissioner, you pointed out at the beginning of your remarks about Officer Pantaleo's good record as a police officer, but he was also being monitored for three CCRB complaints yep. um, for using use of force. How do you square those two things? And is the monitoring working, or should we have been under tighter? His, um, uh, Officer Pantaleo had uh, 289 arrests. As far as we can tell, searching through all the records, no, no other uh, person that he arrested was injured. He had, did have a number of resisting arrests, which is not unusual. He had some CR CCRBs. Uh, the one that was that where he was at, where it was substantiated, that was a bad stop, not use of force. So all this has to be taken in its totality. Um, out of that 289 arrests, there were a number of gun arrests. And what does the NYPD do each and every day? We try to reduce gun violence in, 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 uh, in this city. So that 
I have to look at have to look at his record. That's part of the disciplinary system. Yep. The impact of a decision not to discipline Officer Pantaleo impact on the community have any uh, factor in your decision making in this? So um, I'm not going to stand up here and say I didn't think about that, but I had to be guided by the facts that were brought out in the department trial and that was sent up to our office. Um, I, I see a lot of journalists here that went through 2014. The protest, the murder of uh, Wen Jin Liu and Rafael Ramos, to say that, uh, you know, that's always, that's, out of, that's never out of my mind. I think about that every day, whether there's a department trial or not. So I can't stand up in here and say I didn't, I didn't think about that, but that's not what, how I made my final decision. I'll be uh, right here. Uh, Mayor DeBlasio promised to put the guard of family to get justice in this case. In explaining your decision, you referred more to the legal standards abiding by the judge's decision. Do, do you personally believe that this outcome constitutes justice? Uh, this is uh, the outcome of our trial. We needed it to be fair, fair and impartial, and uh, it was a fair and impartial trial. Right here with the glasses. I know you haven't spoken to the family of Mr. Garner yet, but what would you say to them right now? But that uh, there's, we, from day one, we said that there was going to be a fair and impartial trial, and this is this is the result. Make no mistake about it. This is a, a tragedy for the Garner family. I fully understand that. Mr. Garner was somebody's son, somebody's dad. Uh, everybody in the NYPD understands that. Right here. Uh, a couple of questions. First, when is this termination effective? Is it immediate? It's an immediate. Termination. And second, reading uh, Judge Maldonado's decision, was there anything in it that you disagreed with? I, I agreed with the uh, the content of her decision. Who didn't go yet? Right here. Yeah. Commissioner, during the departmental trial, it came out that a lot of the um, the partner Justice Amigo had trumped up charges on an official form for Ergarna's arrest. Did any part of the other people who testified come to you to say maybe they should be brought up on internal charges? Uh, right after this, uh, Joe Resnick's people from Internal Affairs looked at each officer that was involved in this. There was a number of civilian witnesses, a number of police officer witnesses, and uh, it was Sergeant Adonis received charges and uh, Officer Pantaleo. Aaron. Uh, Commissioner, you spoke a bit about your time as a Did you approach this thing from a position of almost reluctance? Do you want to, to, to dismiss Officer Pantaleo or So I, I can't remove myself from the fact that I was a uniform cop for 34 years. And I think that's what makes this so difficult that every member of law enforcement in this country that works and keeps this country safe and the city safe looked at that and said, that could possibly be me. And uh, that's, it's in my DNA. It's, it's who I am, uh, it's, but as police commissioner, I have to think about the city, and I have to think about the rules and regs of the NYPD and make sure that uh, people follow them. In the back. Being a cop, cop, cop was your biggest concern that this decision the effect of it have on your mind? Said to Being a cop's cop, what's your biggest, biggest concern that the department feel be affected by this decision? I think I stated that. I said if I was still a police officer, I would probably not be happy. But uh, we've been through a lot of things in the NYPD, and it's great history. Uh, I know that uh, men and women that do this job are resilient. If somebody calls for help, dials 911, somebody flags them down, they're not going to think about this decision. They're going to think about why they took this job, and they're going to help that person no matter who they are. Right here. Before you announced your decision, you said you were confident this was the right one. Was there something in particular? Was there a moment when you realized that? And what do you see as commissioner that the officer on the street who might be upset with the decision doesn't see? So, as I said, I went through the testimony, looked at the video a number of times. Uh, I know what the definition of a, of a chokehold is. Um, this is what led me to this decision. And again, a difficult decision. In the back. Can Pantaleo uh, appeal this decision of yours? It can under the civil service law. It can uh, use, I think it's Article 78. Uh, we'll get the DCLM to give you a further explanation of what that process is after the press conference.
Commissioner, it was separation of services one of the possible outcomes in which Pantaleo could have kept his pension as well? And how close were you to embracing that? So, so there were a number of different outcomes. You can see based on the charges, he could have been found not guilty of both. He was found guilty of one. Could have been uh, given a vested interest or he could have been terminated. So uh, specifically separation of services, which would have been more amenable to him keeping his pension. Were you close to that decision? It's, it's something that I had to consider, but uh, that wasn't uh, part of my final decision. Yep, right here. You said earlier that this press is the first time Officer Pendulum was hearing of his firing. Do you have plans to speak with him? Uh, probably not, no. Yep, right here. So that they know many can uh, appeal this decision, but say another police commissioner comes in for the next few weeks or months, can he overturn your decision? No, it's, it's a final decision. It can't be uh, overturned. Hold on one second. Let me see. Marsha, back to you. I just wondered if the fact that Daniel Gaston Ventilator did not testify during the department of trial for any role in the I, I can't speculate on that. Rocco, you had a question? Uh, where is the department at right now, as far as you see? The union obviously will complaining about an hour about this thing. Yep. spoken in recent weeks about the issues. You know, being right, this is, this is a, a big day in, in the police department, and I'm sure most, if not all, are paying attention to this. And as I said, we take this job to do good, and I'm sure, I'm sure that uh, the police officers that raised their right hand and swore an oath will continue to do their jobs. Yep. Tony. Uh, yeah. You meant, we, we talked about this earlier, and you said that the, uh, there was a second microsecond <coughs> where this event unfold. Uh, there was a question about the uh, uh, untruthfulness of Officer Pantaleo's testimony or recollection in proceedings or interviews. Are, are you of the opinion that he didn't, in fact, lie, but there was a swirl of the uh, combat, the, the emotion of, of the time that really didn't have the proper recollection. Yeah, I'm, uh, as I stated before, I'm uh, affirming Judge Maldonado's decision. Lenny? Why wouldn't you let him uh, resign immediately? So there's, uh, no one's asked me this yet, so I'll just throw it out here. What, what have we learned from this case? Uh, what I learned is that uh, we wouldn't let this linger for five years. It's too long. It's unfair to the family. It's unfair to everybody involved uh, in this case. Yep. Last question. What would those changes look like so that it doesn't take five years? Well, it depends on what the situation is. Uh, we would probably have more forceful discussions with the uh, other agencies that are investigating this to, to make sure that we can proceed with our administrative charges. I think we have over here. Yep. Mark. Uh, I know you came to this decision on your own, but can you speak a little bit about any pressure from the mayor's office and how, whether if that was a factor in this at all? Now, I, have to, I have to do what's, uh, first I have to look at Rosemary's decision. Uh, I have to look at Ben's uh, affirmation and be guided by that. Now there was this pressure from on any number of sides here to you know, make this decision, make that decision. I had to do, in the end, what I felt was the correct decision. Anybody else? Um, Ms. Warren, you, you talked a little bit about the delay in this case, which the mayor and others have attributed to the Department of Justice's investigation taking so long. Do you regret deferring to them for so long until last year? Uh, regret is probably too strong a word, but I def it definitely makes me rethink uh, going forward how would we proceed with administrative trials. Yep. Now that Officer Pantaleo's disciplinary trial is over, do you have an idea of when you plan to schedule um, uh, Sergeant Kizzy O'Donis' disciplinary trial? Yeah, we're in, the, we're in the process of finalizing that. This year, next year? Yeah, it's going to be, it'll, it'll be soon. It'll be this year. What's the holdup? It's a disciplinary case. These, we have to make sure that we look at all the facts. We have to make sure we have a conducted thorough investigation, and then we move forward. Are there any changes in changes to training in light of all of this that's happening? Say that again, Marsha. Any changes to training? Yeah, we did uh, immediately followed. We did uh, de-escalation training. Sir, all, right. Just, uh, lastly, all right, hold on. Right here, and then you have one? Okay, and then that's it. Yep. Um, you talked about uh, uh, how you think the Garner family, we feel about all this. You talked about the pressure in the police department. What do you want the residents of New York City to take from this? 
So what I want the residents of New York City to do